nothing and she left it in the cart. Is it a nice oh. phone? I'm like, Mom, what the heck? Oh, dear. I get that. It's really unfortunate. All right, guys, let's start off any <laughs> specific questions from homework or anything. Ooh. That was an interesting <laughs> reaction. I like that. And then a uh, what section? Uh, section 2.3. 2.3. Oh, yeah, okay, good. Beautiful. All right, so everybody who's got their book with them, obviously, mm -hmm. you won't be able to do this next thing. If you haven't tried 24, page 134, read through that. Real quick. Somebody near you has a book and you don't have a book, maybe you can read with them. I can't see. Okay. Number 24. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring my book home, Mark. Let's do this. My mama does homework in the car. So. <laughs> Number 34? 24. 24. Right, Carlos? Right. Yeah. 25. I'm going to just kidding. 24, yes. All right, let's see. So I'm going to summarize what you just read. In 2000, uh, it was 45 percent. 45 percent of adults believe most qualified students get to attend college. For the period from 2000 to 2010, the percentage who believed that a college education is available to most qualified decreased by about 1.7 each year. So. If this trend continues, when will only 11% believe this is true? Now, just to remind you guys, almost every problem in this homework and on the tests or quizzes or whatever, you could probably solve a lot of them without algebra. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I've gone through this enough to explain to you that, yeah, we want to give you simple problems because we want you to learn the algebra and not have the actual problem be like this huge thing also. So just because you get the answer doesn't mean great things because that analogy about being in driver's ed and then walking to the mall and wanting to get credit for that, well, that's bullshit. So the whole point of this class is to teach you algebra. So... Uh, this is a problem that you could do a different way without algebra. That's great. We're trying to learn algebra so that the problems that require algebra will be easier. Um, so we start off with 45%. It decreases 1.7% every year. So in 2000, it's 45%. What will it be in 2001? Yeah, it'll be 45%. Is that door locked? Well, that sucks. Yeah, well, yeah, like I have that option. <laughs> Sorry, I would do that. I didn't show up. <laughs> it's too bad for you. I had to go home. Nobody said. So 45%. So 2001, it would just be 45% minus? Minus the 1.7. 1. 1.7%. 1. 1. I don't care what the number is. That would be the enroll. That would be the percent believing in 2001, right? Mm -hmm. What about 2002? That, that number. Yeah, 45% minus 1.7% minus, minus another 1.7%. Right. So minus, uh, let's, yeah, let's do it like this, 1% times 2, right? Because right. you, you want to subtract two of these. And here you wanted to only subtract one of them. What about 2003? Okay, 45% uh, minus 1.7 times 3. 
Let me see if you guys can handle what I'm about to say. What about in 2000 plus N? What the hell does that mean? That's 2000 plus 1. That's 2000 plus 2. That's 2000 plus 3. This is N years after the year 2000. 45% minus. Yeah, 45% minus. 1.7%. N, N, N. Times N. 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 Isn't that what we keep doing? One year away from 2000 will be one of these. Two years away will be two of these. Three years away will be three of these. N years away. Why the shit did I do this? Because the question is when, I don't know when. So how many years after 2000 I need to have that expression? I need to have an expression for what the percentage will be any number of years after the year 2000. So there's a whole category of word problems where if you just give yourself, you don't know what the answer is, but then just say, okay, what if the answer was this? What would it look like? What if it was two? What would it look like? And then see, now you can see the pattern. Where does the variable go? Well, the part that's changing, that varies, right? So my equation then for any number of years after 2000 is this. And what do I want that to be? What do I want that to be? I'm trying to find the year when what is true? 11%. 11%. So I want this times n to be 11%. Well, you can take the percentages out so it's not all, you don't have to use units in an equation, right? Yeah. And now it looks a lot more like a, just a regular equation. You could use x instead of n. I just use n for a number of years, right? That one, I agree, is a little bit freaky, but it, it's a nice illustration of writing a few situations out to get the pattern down to know where the hell the variable even goes in the first place. Fish. So, if you added that, so you're allowed to be 12.7? No, come on now, come on. Come on, come on, come on. So, 45 minus 1.7 n equals 11. How do I solve for n? Divide. No. no. What's in the wrong place? But 45 is in the wrong place. It's supposed to be with the other numbers. Yeah. You couldn't. You could add this over here, sure, but you can't add these together. They're not like terms. So whatever the hell that is, I'll let you guys do some work for that. Your answer. If you got n equal to 27, what does that mean? In the year 27. <laughs> What would n equal to 27 mean? As 11%. In what year? 27? 2027, exactly. Right? Okay, cool. Freak So don't just circle, you know, whatever it is you get. Tell me what that means. All right, anything else from homework stuff? We'll do another problem sort of like that just to get the idea down a little bit more. Mm. All right, all right. So no questions from homework stuff? Never. Never, okay. Jackie's like, that's silly, man. Questions. <laughs> Whatever. The questions are for suckers. Okay, so let me show you a couple examples. Let me do another one that's sort of related to this. And then we got, we got a couple of percentage problem examples. Those give people lots of trouble. We've talked about percentages earlier this semester, but people are having less and less understanding of percentages, which really sucks a lot because you go to a store, they can take advantage of you easy. Right? I almost want to open a store and just take advantage of everybody because I know how. <laughs> but I'm sort of on the other side of that war, so. Oh, well. It kind of does speak. <laughs> yeah. I was not too worried about money because I'm a teacher. Um, so let me see. Uh, let's see. Which one's sort of like this? Da -da -da -da. Ooh, yeah, that's gross. Well, let's say, okay, let's say this. Uh, See. Oh, 
All right. So in this uh, certain class, uh, there were uh, 56 students to begin with, right? And uh, let's say, let's call this uh, in class A, ooh, to be all original. In class A, there are 56 students to begin with at the start of the semester. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, let me see. About two students per week drop. All right, how are we doing? You with me? In this, in this other class, in class B, good old class B, there were uh, 38 students to start with. And about, what you do it, Jeff? Uh, let's say, let's see what's going to work, guys. Yeah, sure. About four students add each week. What class is that that lets students? I don't know. Well, we'll just go with it. Each student? Good job, Jeff. Each week. So in class A, there were 56 students, and about two students drop a week. In class B, there were 38 students to start with, and about four students add each week. So hopefully, does anybody can predict what the question's going to be? Mm -hmm. Mer. How many students at the end of the... Mer. What do you think? i got two separate classes. One <laughs> class is shrinking in size. Right. What percentage? And the other class, so one class is going like this, right. and the other class is going like that. So I might be interested in when will they have the same enrollment? Well, that's what we need Alfred to help us figure out. Uh, how many weeks till they have the same enrollment? So same number of students. Okay. So this is a uh, this is a lot like the one we just did, believe it or not, because there's a certain amount of decrease that's happening. Now the one we just did only had one situation. This is two separate situations. So for each one, I can kind of do like we did. For this one, I start with 56. One week later, how many students are there? 54. Yeah, because you do 56 minus two, so that's one week later. Oh my God, Jeff. Two weeks later, how many students are there? 52. Yeah, 56 minus 2 times 2. I mean, you guys see what I'm saying? Every week, you lose two students. So it's 56 minus 2 times the number of weeks you've gone through. Does that, mm -hmm. that's how you would figure this out. So the third week would be 56 minus 2. So what's the nth week? Fifty-six minus two n. Right, we'll just let people know. <laughs> Not like it does much worse anyway. These vents and these doors, it's awesome. Run, Jeff. <laughs> so, so can you guys? You start to realize the category of equation that will uh, work for this kind of problem is going to be a, a, a an amount plus or minus something per week or per hour. So if I called a plumber and he charged uh, $60 just to come to the house, plus uh, $10 per hour, all right, that's how much you got to pay him. Mm -hmm. So if I've got 150 bucks, how long can I have him stay? <laughs> that's the kind of problem that that would work with. So what's this equation going to look like for the number of students after so many weeks? I'm sure you did. 38 plus 4, yeah. 38 plus 4, yeah. N. Start with 38 every week. So how many weeks? I don't know, N weeks. You add 4 each week, so it would be plus 4 N. If it was 2 weeks later, you would add 8 students. 3 weeks later, you would add 12 students. Well, how do we find out what the each is? Now, pay attention to what you just said. 
They. What do you mean they? Help me out. C- come on, help me. Help me. They. Yeah. How do you find out when they equal? So what? Are, what's they up here? Yeah. So here's the number of students in this one, right? And here's the number of students in that one. You answered your own question just now. How do I make that equal that? Well, I just make them equal each other. So what's the question we're asking? Is, are you cool with this represents the number of students in this class, right? And this represents the number of students in gla- that class. So the question is, when does this equal this? Well, then write that down and solve it. That's almost insane to realize. If the question is, when is this equal this? You make that equal that. You force it to happen. All right, here, 30 plus 4n. You freaking equal 56 minus 2n. Now I can solve for n to see when that's true. So when is that true? Well, I'll solve, I'll get n, that's when it's true. Do you see what I mean? So you said exactly the way you had to say it to, to lead you to the equation. Now should be the easy step. So use the that answer? Or? Yeah, this represents the number of students in this class after n weeks. You just put n... This represents the number of students in this class after n weeks. And why did I put an n here? Because after one week, I subtract two. After two weeks, I subtract two times two, four. So that's just changing. That's yeah, that's the part that's changing is the amount that I subtract after a given number of weeks. Okay. Right, if I was losing two students per week, after six weeks, how many students would I lose? If I was losing two students a week, after six weeks I would lose so 12. Six times two. So after n weeks, I'm going to lose two n students. Oh. Okay, I like it. So, of course, when you add two n, subtract 38, divide by six, you get n equals three. So then how many weeks until the, the same? Three weeks. I'll just put three, because again, I'll be sure to be super dorky and put three centuries, and everything's dead to him. Yeah, they'll have the same enrollment, then I'll be zero. Right. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Well, oh, so that's that kind, and it would be like having a plumber come over the house, and it costs so much per hour. So that word per is huge. That's where the variable goes. Right? Okay. All right. So let's do some percentage problems. (laughs) First off, let me just do one that's just straight up use of percentages, and then I'll try to see, show you how it works. Notice something about algebra. It works really well when we know the end result of something, but we don't know what we started with, right? So in that one, I knew I wanted them to be equal, but I don't know how many weeks I ha- have to let happen before that happens, right? So, or I know how much income I made uh, from investments, but I don't know how much I put in each investment. That weird-ass person that exists, I guess, somewhere. <laughs> how much money did I put? Who are you? Um... So let's just do, this is not a word problem one. This is straight up use of percentages. Uh, Shirt, good old shirt, costs uh, $18 normally. On sale for 9% off. What's the sale price? So this is stuff we've done before. This is not the algebra yet. The algebra would... We would know the sale price. We would not know what the original price was. That would be the algebra. There's no X required here. It's a straight up calculation problem. How do you get to the sale price? What do you have to do first? Multiply 
Yeah, I want to figure out what 9% of 18 is first, because that's the amount that I'm going to have to take away from 18, right? So I'm going to do 18 minus 9% of, so 0 0.09 of 18. Isn't that what you would do? Yeah. You figure out what 9% of 18 is, that's how much you're going to take off, and then you would subtract it from 18, because we just said that's how much I'm going to take off, right? And that would equal the sale price. Is that cool? So I almost don't care about the answer to that, to be honest, because what I want to get from this is the setup. So what did we actually just do? We figured out that the sale price is equal to the original minus the percent of the original. Would you agree with me that that's, if it was a mark off, if you're discounting something, you would always use that equation. I mean, that's the way it would work. Car is normally $30,000. I'll give you 2% off. Oh, thank you. So then we do 3,000 minus 2% of 30,000 to figure out how much you're going to pay the guy. Well, but you said original, so the original price minus 50 cents and then multiply by the original thing. Because how do I figure out how much is going to come off of $18? How do I figure that out? You would find 9% of? Ah, 9% of 18. You take the percentage of the original to figure out how much to take off the original, right? Once you do 9% of 18, you would subtract it from 18 because that's the freaking discount. Is that, is that cool? All right, I like it. So this is basically always true. Now, what if it was a markup? What would be the only change in this equation if it was a markup? I'm a seller and I mark the price up. I put a freaking plus there. It's the only, it's the only difference. Oh, thank you. We have controlled entry. Sorry. Not by choice. Okay. So then what if, instead of knowing what the original was, what if I tell you now the sale price of something is... Uh, well, let me make it. Can you make it work out nice, Jeff? I, I don't know. Let's see. That's uh, my 48A. Sure. Uh, no, no, no. 28A. Go the other way, Jeff. Uh, after a 20% discount. What was the original price? All right, let me see if I made this come out nice. If not, we'll just round. Who cares? The mistake people make, and please let me see if you guys understand why this is a mistake. The mistake people make is they do 20% of 2880 and then they add it to 2880. That, might, that doesn't make any damn sense. You're never going to get all the way back up to where you were. Because how did I get to 2880 in the first place? I took 20% of a bigger number and subtracted it. So how would 20% of a smaller number added get me all the way back up? It's it can't. I don't blame somebody for wanting that to be the truth to see how it works. But please see how that's completely not the truth. So it's sort of like, I, I, I told you about if I was making 10 bucks an hour mm -hmm. and they cut my pay for 10%, and then they add 10% back, did I make it all the way back up? No, of course I didn't, because it was 10% of a smaller number trying to make up the difference, never. So I've got to use algebra for this. And in fact, I know the setup. Except now, where's my unknown? What is the thing I don't know? The original. Yeah, so what are we going to call the original price? Um, oh, if you want, sure. And we'll call it X, I guess, maybe. Sure. The end earlier was because it was a number of, right? doesn't really matter what letter you use. So then how does the equation get set up? What's the sale price? Yeah, so here's the idea. 2880, how did I get to that sale price? I took the original and I subtracted 20% of the original. That's how I get to a sale price. I take what was the original price, and I take 20% in this case of the original off. And now it's an equation I can solve. Now here's the other part that freaks students out, the decimals. What is x minus 0.2x? Well, what's a dollar minus 20 cents? 
80 cents, so it's 0. 0.8. Don't make too big of a deal out of this, right? How can I write 1? I can write it as 1.00, of course, right? That's the same thing as 1. So what's 1.00 minus 0. 0.20? 0. 0.80. Don't make a big deal out of that. Maybe, maybe. And what? how does this make... Yeah. Second? It's all still X. Yeah. yeah, since they're both X, yeah. So 0.8X. But I'm just worried about what the 1 minus 0. 0.2 was. So it would be 2880 equals 0.8x. And then, of course, what do I do? Divide. Divide by 0.8. I love it. See? So that should be the easy part of solving that equation. Let's see if Jeff made something that works. I think it will. Oh, yay! All right, that's what I was And if you check it, 20% of 36 is 720, 720 away from 36 is 2080, it works. Now real quick, just to show you the mistake people make, what is 20% of 2880? 20% of 2880. 20 of 2880. Should be 576, right? Is anybody actually doing that? Oh, no. 576. So, 20, so the mistake people make is they say, okay, let me just add 20% of 2880, which is 576. Let me add that to 2880. How far up do we get? We get up to 3456. Do we get up to where it really, really was? No, of course we don't, because that's 20% of a smaller number. It's never going to be able to get all the way back to where it used to be. So that's why that will not work. I will still have somebody in here do that for me, but mm -hmm. I do what I can. And part of me, they can't blame you. Your, your brain goes, please, dear God, be this. Yes? So the, that equation right there, so the sales price equals original investment. Something we always do when we do for Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a, a simple just, it's 10% off. Well, you would take the original minus 10% of the original, right? That's, and that's how you would do it. And if it was a markup, there would be a plus there, right? That's the only difference. You would add the amount on top instead of taking the amount off. So we could put sales price equals original plus or minus. Yeah, depending on if it's a markup or a markdown. If it's a discount or if it's a markup, but, you know, like I'm the seller, I'm going to mark it up so I can make some profit, right? And I keep it all for myself and not pay my employees. Ha, <laughs> ha, Sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, Social commentary, Jeff, shut up. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Okay, I think. Oh, you're going to be so excited. I have uh, even more word problem practice. Exactly what you were hoping for. If you were not here yesterday, I feel kind of bad for you. But anybody still need that from yesterday, the handout? Oh, yeah, early Christmas present. Jeff, I give the worst Christmas present. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. All right. So it's a really good idea.